In this lesson, we'll continue our review of PSAT Math Test 2, Section 3, No Calculator, Questions 12 and 13. 12 and 13, I know this looks different from your test, but this is the end of the problem solving and then the grid and start here. I've just spliced these two together. So we know these last two will be difficult and then the difficult level resets, becomes easy at 14. So let's take a look at 12. We've got this equation where a is a constant is true for all values of x and y, what is the value of a? So they're just testing your rules of, of powers and exponents. And so let's first simplify this. So we have the quantity x squared times y cubed to the 1 half. And with exponents, just think about when you're just really multiplying when it's to the power like this, it's just like multiplying a fraction. So x times 2, it's really 2 times 1 half. So 2 times 1 half is 1. The x is just going to become x to the first. And let's do, again, we're multiplying fractions. So y cubed times 1 half, that's going to be 3 halves. We're just multiplying across. So that's 3 halves. And let's do the second quantity now. So x squared to the 1 third. All right, so that's just going to be x to the 2 thirds. And y cubed to the 1 third, well, that's just y. All right, and we know it equals x to the a over 3, y a over 2. And so what we could also do is like combine these. So here's an x. Let's change the colors here. Here's an x, and here's this. So remember, what we can do is this is already in thirds. So we could also write this, if you think about it, as 3 over 3, which is x to the 1. And then you can combine these. Right, so both of these together, both of the x's are x, and remember we add now here because we have the same exponent and we're multiplying, so that's x to the 5 thirds. And let's do the y, so I'm going to change this to 2 over 2, right, because I've got halves here, and that's going to be times y. We add these, it's going to be to the 5 halves. And now compare it, all right, so a over 3 and a over 2. See how similar it is? And the question's asking, what is a? to recognize that a is going to be 5 for both of these, right? 5 thirds and 5 halves. So it's just really testing your rules of exponents. And so the answer is C. It's 5 for that one. And let's take a look at the last question before the problem solving. Let's take a look at 13. In the equation above, x y equals x minus 6, x plus 12, the quantity, is graphed in the xy plane. What is the x-coordinate of the parabola's vertex? So you really should know the three forms of a parabola, different forms and, and how to identify the vertex. We have the standard form, we have vertex form, and this is called intercept. Some I think some students call it factored form. And you really should know how to find the vertex in all three methods. I'm not going to do it in this video, but if you don't know, you should review. All right, so this is intercept form. We know if these are the factors that the solutions are going to be 6, right? That's where x is 0, and negative 12. The easiest way to explain to get the vertex, I can show you how to do the x and y, even though the question is just asking for the x, is, remember this is a parabola, it's an upward opening parabola, and these are the two points where it intersects the x-intercept. It, the axis of symmetry is right in the middle. And in this case, I mean, you could see that these are 18 apart. And so 18 apart, if you just think about, well, what's half of 18? It's 9. And so it's going to be, you know, actually I should have, I should have drawn, well, I went by these values here, but think about it like this. Negative 12 is obviously on this side, and this is 6. But these are 18 apart, and half of that is 9. So it's going to be 9 this way or 9 this way. In either case, you're going to get negative 3, and that's the x value of the intercept. You could also, if it's a harder question, just take the average of the, these two, just add them together, right? and divide by 2, and that's negative 3. So that'll give you the x-coordinate. And for the y, when it's an intercept form, you don't have to multiply it out and put it in standard form. All you have to do is plug it in for both of these. You plug in negative 3 and negative 3. It's a true statement. And so here, we end up with negative 3 minus 6, right? That's negative 9. And here we get negative 3 plus 12 is positive 9. And so negative 81 is the y. They're not asking for that, but uh, that's the answer. And so as long as we're in this video, let's just go ahead and do the first two problem solving. These are going to be much easier, or excuse me, gradients than the problem solving. So again, 
comparing these two that took a little bit of time, but look at number 14. 21x plus 14 equals 7 times 3x plus a. In the equation above, a is a constant. For what value of a does the equation have infinite number of solutions? So infinite number means that they're the same equation. So 21x plus 14, we're going to distribute the 7. We get 21x plus 7a. All right, so these are both the same. So these have to be the same. <laughs> And so a is 2. That's it. That's the answer. It's a pretty easy question. And we'll do number 16, and then we'll stop. Here they give us this expression. And they tell us that 3x plus 4 is a factor. What's the value of a? And so think about the factors. They're giving us one of the factors if we factor it out. And so we've got 3x plus 4 is 1. All right, so to get 12x squared, if we have a 3x, this has to be a 4x, right? When we FOIL it out, we get 12x squared. Now, this last term is negative 20. We already have a positive 4. This has to be negative 5. So let's multiply it out. We get 12x squared, all right? Then we get minus 15x. These are the two middle terms. We get plus 16x, and then we get minus 20. We knew that. And the question is saying, so this is the middle term. So if you add negative 15x and 16x, you really just get plus 1x is the middle term. And the question is asking, what's a? What's the coefficient in front of the x? It's just 1. And that is the answer.